Hi, and welcome to Journey Forward with Jory Rose, where you will gain insights, tools, and inspiration to get unstuck and live your best life. Jory is a licensed marriage and family therapist with a passion for helping people cultivate awareness and authenticity so they can show up fully in all aspects of their life. And now, here's Jory. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Journey Forward with Jory Rose. I am really looking forward to this conversation today with my guest, Rachel Brooks. Rachel, I know we're going to have so many things to talk about, and I've been trying to have this conversation with you for a while now, and so I'm really grateful to you to be sharing some of your day with us, and please introduce yourself, tell our listeners who you are, and how you show up in the world. What's the what, What's your purpose that you're living Yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here and, and just grateful we got the chance to you know, connect after all of our hits and misses, and I'm so <laughs> glad to be here. But yeah, so um, you know, just a quick, quick intro of myself. I am Rachel Brooks, a fitness and lifestyle entrepreneur, a best-selling author of Chasing Perfection, host of the Confident Woman podcast, and founder and creator of the Confident Woman Collective and my apparel line, which is a lifestyle active apparel. It's called I Am Athletics. So in short- Wow, you, what, can I just like pause? Hold on one absolutely. Second like, that, was, <laughs> that was a lot of stuff, but I want to- well, Okay, so- fitness and lifestyle entrepreneur, which I'm sure we'll get into. You've got the podcast, a, a, an apparel line- uh, best-selling author. How, okay, just first off, how do you have time for it all? Because your title of the book is Chasing Perfection, which makes me think that you're really busy. And but uh, how? <laughs> that's amazing. Congratulations on all that you're doing. And that's a lot. It, yes, and, and you know, it, it's it cut so- you off. I just wanted to honor you because that's a lot that you've done, my dear friend. Like, amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, I I say it's like it sounds like a whole lot, but you know, when when you're passionate about what you do and you're coming from a place of purpose, I feel like they're all in alignment with everything that I do consistently and congruently throughout yes. my life. And I think that's really the importance of it. Is like you know, it, it being in that fitness and lifestyle business and that creativeness and that entrepreneurial space. It's, you know, partly of, you know, in summary of what I do, I really do equip and empower women um, to become their best and most confident selves. Mm -hmm. And through, you know, whether that's providing and creating, um, you know, a safe space for them in our community, which is the Confident Woman Collective, or, you know, equipping them with the tools and resources they'll need to, you know, overcome or, you know, even just get started throughout their journey. And that also is inside the Confident Woman Collective. And so in summation, like everything I do is now housed into that one safe space, which is the container. And that's the Confident Woman Collective. So inside there, you know, we have uh, guides and we have members that are really just, again, it's, it's like peer to peer community to Mm. help, help empower them to, you know, become their best self throughout this journey that we call life. And, and yes. you know, the number one thing that we can't do is go through life alone. And so, you know, having this place where um, I think overall, like, you know, I needed it at the very beginning of my own journey. And so really sure. what I, what I do and create is from a place of service, but it's also from a place of, I needed it then. And I know that I'm not alone. So I'm going to create it and provide it for that next woman who, you know, may not even know she needs it yet. Or that woman who is at that sticking point where she's just like, I wish that this thing existed. And I'm like, it's there. It's all inside the collective. Everything that I do is really meant to give back because I was on that other side and I know how it just feels daunting, Uh, scary, lonely. And it just frankly, like sucks to go at this journey when you don't have the right support. You know what? Rachel, I, I, there's so much of what you just said that resonated so much with me. And I think part of, you know, my excitement for all that you accomplished in that little, you know, introduction is because I get a lot of that same feedback because I have done a lot and people say to me, how do you do it? So when I find others who are doing and producing and creating and living their purpose and their mission and their dream and right? That authentic drive that gets them to produce and create and inspire, right? And what you said was so, I just resonated. It's like this big, deep soul. Yes. It's when you're in alignment, it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. 
And like, that was one part that I was like, oh my gosh, I, I understand her. But the other piece of it is I'm creating what I wish I had. Right. Yeah. And I, I love coming from that place because one of my highest values is authenticity in both my personal and professional life. And yes, like I, I so resonate so much of what I do. Like I used to guide the weekly meditations in my office when I had a physical office space that I gave up since COVID, but I would sit down and guide meditation and say, you guys like, really thank you for being here. Cause I needed this today. Like, you know, I'm here for you. And this was a little self-serving. Like I needed to make sure I carved the time and space in my week to just slow down and breathe. And I know if I need it, I'm not the only one. Exactly. And I think that's, that's so important when we think of, um, you know, just even, even women I speak to, they're just like, well, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, can I start a business or do I have a, you know, what my purpose is or any of that stuff. And I always just say, when you find your, your passion. And so when to, you know, people are like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about everything. We'll kind of get to, you know, what are two things that either light you up or piss you off. And it's just, mm. when, when we find those two, that's where we become like, you, you become an advocate for that. You become so passionate, whether it's from a negative place or a positive place, but then when you can combine that with purpose, that's where the sweet spot is. And that's when it doesn't feel like anything except you living authentically in your truth and stepping into yes. who you're created to be. And it just feels like flow. It just feels like it it's a part of you. Right. It does. Well, and the thing that I took from that, and I wrote that down, you know, what are the things that either light up or piss you off? Because at the root of that, those are your values. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you're either values driven of what you already are embodying in your life. Or I will always say to people, like whatever's pissing you off, whatever boundaries been crossed, whatever injustice is in the world is simply just highlighting to you what's important. Because if it didn't piss you off, it wouldn't be important to you. So it's a beautiful way to reframe mm -hmm. being pissed or those challenges to say, wow, this is really good information. Look what thank you universe for showing me what's important to me. Cause if I didn't care about it, it wouldn't matter. Right. And I think that's so important is like, you know, you could copy somebody else's doing the next thing and you're like, Oh, I want that life that they've, you know, put out on social media and you just think, okay, well, if I copy that or, you know, I start something similar to it, but yeah, if you don't have that intent and that passion, it's, it's not yours. And that's because you're trying to fit the shoes of somebody else's purpose-driven life. And so really taking that, that I, you know, step back and then reflecting and saying, well, really, what is true to me? What are my yeah. values? What is that something that, you know, I can do and I could do it well. And that might be just where you start. And I think that is kind of really the start of your self-discovery journey, because you're going to find that sure. as you continue working on yourself. And that really is, you know, the, the concept of self-awareness. But my question to you as the listener, like, how well do you know yourself, right? Like, who are you? So getting to that root of who you are, then you can identify those values, your beliefs, your principles, what you stand for, what you're willing to accept and what, you know, what are your non-negotiables in life and start frameworking that because it's not so much from a business perspective because everything starts from self and, yeah. you know, the best investment is self-investment. If we're not pouring into who we are, we're going to just keep trying to replicate in become something that we're not. And then, you know, our business might emulate that, but yet it's not congruent. And eventually you'll, you know, maybe that business might work or take off, but yet you're going to fizz out and fade out because you don't have a passion and you're not truly invested in it. Yes. Oh, you, you I think you and I could talk for the next 10 hours. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I think awareness is the answer to everything. You know, it truly is. And yet I was just writing my newsletter that I send out every Monday morning. And what I was partly writing today was like, I, I, I just led a women's retreat. I know by the time that we air this, it'll have been months since my retreat, but I just came back a couple of days ago and I had some major awarenesses for myself, even though I was there guiding it, which is exactly what I hope to happen. Cause just cause I'm guiding and teaching doesn't mean I'm not my own student. Right. Mm -hmm. And that awareness is never a one and done. Right. Right. And I think so many people are like, but I healed that. Why, why am I still stuck? It's like, well, because that's life. And we've constantly got to practice that awareness. And, and, and I believe really checking in with ourselves. Am I on the right path? Am I in alignment? Looking at where am I out of alignment and getting curious about it rather than shaming ourselves or judging ourselves. Oh, I didn't do that well, or I didn't accomplish all that I needed, or I reacted over here and I got angry over here. 
and to just have that constant self-awareness. So seeing it's it's such a a foundation of what you clearly create in your personal and professional world. How would you say to people who are listening right now? Okay, Rachel, that sounds great, but I have no idea what the fuck you mean by becoming (laughs) self-aware. Like, (laughs) I know I would answer it, but I'm really curious. And for you to share from your own wisdom, how do, how does someone become self-aware who's never even known what that really meant other than that sounds like something lovely and maybe they should be doing. Right. And I was, again, everything I I speak about and create and do is from my own past experiences. And I was exactly at that sticking point. Like I I didn't know who I was. So I'm like, you know, I heard the concept of self-awareness and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm here. So I see myself, I'm aware. I see my reflection, like I'm good to go, (laughs) but it was like, I'm here. (laughs) Right. And so, you know, but I think with, you know, with that level of self-awareness is one, yeah. Recognizing your reflection, but yet it's also getting to truly know yourself, question everything when it comes down to your actions or, you know, when we actually unravel it and go back to like the root of it, question your beliefs, question your, your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors, your habits, you know, and really that's going to tell you who you are. But I think at the starting point, we might take an overview of it and just kind of, you know, brush it off off and say, okay, well, this is, this is who I am. And this is who I stand for. So I'm good to go. And it's like, okay, but again, we all have these pain points in our lives. And those are, you know, it goes back to our self-awareness level, like question, how did you get there? Why did you believe that to be true? What is this, you know, is it serving you? Is it not? What, um, you know, what is something that you stand for? Um, really, who are you and get to the root of like who you really are. And I think for many of us, we start at that surface level and we could tell ourselves like who we're not. And then we could tell, you know, what, what we don't believe. Um, you know, a lot of times our, our identity comes from our own self-limiting beliefs. And those could be like, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, a leader. I'm not uh, a creative person. I'm not this. I'm not a writer. And in fact, when I even wrote my book, that was, I had fear coming up all over the place, you know, from, you know, people asking me, oh, you should write a book about that. Have you considered it? And I said, um, yeah, I thought about it real quick. And the answer is right, right now hard no. And it took some of that, you know, just planting the seed for me to start unraveling that and question myself because I found myself in that place of not aware of what I actually had or the gifts and talents that I was able to bring to the table and offer, um, you know, a place of service. So when I, when that question came up about my book, I immediately just said, who am I? You know, immediately fear told me, who am I? You're not a writer. You're not an expert. You're not this, you're not that. Like, get over yourself kind of stuff. And if I actually believe that to be true, which I did at one point, and I had a question that I said, well, where did that come from? Why do I believe that? I may not be a writer now, but is it possible that I can become one? And so questioning every time I, that I got to the sticking point that I felt this resistant and kind of like this guard come up, I paused for a moment and allowing, you know, with self-awareness, we, we recognize these things and it could be, Um, you know, immediately that reaction aspect of it was from that place of fear, but having come through a little bit and just started the practice, I was able to like bite my tongue and say, instead of reacting, I'm going to respond. And I'm going to pause in that moment and say, well, is this of an interest to me? Do I want to genuinely write a book? What is the purpose of this book? And really start questioning these things. And I realized then it wasn't so much from a place of fear and who am I not? It was a place of, I had to get to in who I am knowing that Everything that I have inside of me is not only my gift, but I feel like we're all here on, on purpose, with purpose and for purpose. And I said, well, if I needed this, then for me, again, I need to share this with others as well. So awareness Uh, really, really makes you pause in your, in your tracks and question, question everything from who you are, to what you believe, what you think, to what you do in every single day is your habit building, right? So if we don't like how we got to where we're at, we need to start unraveling and look back at what we do. So one of my mantras is consistency compounded over time yields results. So if we want to know how we got to someplace, we have to consistently look back at the, the little, we got little breadcrumbs, right? And so we have to go back to it. We don't like who we are. Well, let's go back to how we got there and start unraveling this. And so again, awareness is this whole concept of taking like an aerial overview of of who you are and how you got there and then reverse engineering it, question Uh, it and unravel it to get to where you were. So much yes to all of that. So much yes. And again, you're, you're speaking to what I hold at such a high value and you can't have that awareness without the pause. Right. Because right. I think there's, everything I heard you say, like, 
it requires the pause. You can't be curious. You can't reflect. You can't question. You can't check in to say, where did this thought come from? Where did this belief come from? Is it still true for me now? Because people might check in and say, yeah, this is true. And maybe it was true Mm -hmm. at a previous point in their life. And they've not considered, is this true right now? Right. And without the pause, you just like that train has left the station and it's just like going full force ahead. And you don't even realize you're on the train because it just happened to pull into the station and there you were and you automatically just clambered on board, right? Right. Yeah. And you just become autopilot and we just, you know, in a sense, we become drifters and sleepwalkers through life without questioning and pausing, not only what we do, but actually who we are and who we're becoming. So I think, you know, for, for people who are kind of at that place in their life, they're just like, I want more. I want more for myself. I want more out of my life. I want more for my family. I I just, I, I want more, but yeah, you have to ask yourself, like, what is more and what does that look like to you? And what do you, what, what does it feel like more importantly? Um, you know, and, and so having that pause moment, I think we're, we've been conditioned to react and that's basically, you know, for, for me and my own personal experiences come from a place of ego and pride because I had something to prove, but yet when you know who you are, you don't have anything to prove. Yeah. So it's really, again, doing that inner work. And it's not to say that these things won't ever come up. Cause like you said, sure. if you've mastered it in one area, that same lesson will show itself in a different area. So it'll constantly, this, this is the journey, the evolution in, you know, you didn't just, you know, arrive. It's not like you just got woke and you're good for the next you know, 30 (laughs) years, 40 years of your life. And it's like, I did that, you know, that one time that long ago, but it's this constant evolution. And yes, you know, it's just, it's, it's really about spending quality, honest time with yourself. And Mm -hmm. I think that more that more we want because it's an innate craving and desire for more. But yet if we don't know who we are and what we desire, then that is kind of like really, it's just ambiguous. It's like, Oh, I just want more, but what is it? So I would and say I love what you said too. It, not just what does it look like, but what would more feel like? Yeah. Because I think sometimes we might not even know that. So even what it would feel like takes self-reflection and turning inward because it might be really easy to compare, to get into that comparative mind of, well, that person over there looks happy and these are the things that they are doing or have or being or have accomplished. And so I'll, I'll do what she's doing, right? right? But that might feel entirely different. Like for me, it's, I want to feel in alignment. Like that's to me when I know I'm living my truth is when there's flow, Mm -hmm. And you can't, I can't have flow when I keep coming up against resistance. So, you know, I feel successful when I feel aligned, but I also have to know, well, what are the conditions I can create to allow that alignment to occur? If I don't even know what that means, like you said, okay, let's do some more reverse engineering here. Let's get curious about that. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, that comes from, you know, spending time with self and, you know, and that's really scary for a lot of people. I mean, I'm oh, a therapist oh. and a lot of people really don't want to spend time with themselves, but yet they want the outcome right. from those who spend the time with themselves. They kind of want to bypass, which is the spiritual bypassing, right? They want to get to the end goal without doing the work. Right. Sitting, sitting with yourself can feel really daunting. Like I remember my very first meditation I was ever guided in. It was 10 minutes, Rachel, 10 minutes. <laughs> I thought. I was going to die yeah. because I realized, holy cow, I have never sat in stillness yep. with my own breath and my own thoughts and all what felt messy and uncomfortable in between on purpose. Like, why would I do that? Like, that doesn't feel comfortable. Right. What happens when I have an awareness of something I don't like or that I don't know what to do with? Like, it's really hard work. It is. It is a hundred percent hard work, but so is staying the same, right? Because yes. you're, you're maintaining a level of unfulfillment and, you know, just it, it's, you don't like living in this life. Right. So it's like, you want something new and exciting and, and all those They're things. Both hard. That, right. And, and, you know, in my book, chasing perfection, that's exactly what I talk about because you know, for, for you to really get to know yourself, you have to become your own best friend first before you can be somebody else's. And I thought that, you know, that was something my mother said to me when I was a kid. And of course, you know, as a kid, you don't want to listen to your parents. You say, whatever, mom. (laughs) And so I brushed it off. And, you know, luckily 
I did, you know, embrace that, that lesson and that message. Um, but it took me what felt like a lifetime to get there because I didn't want to be my own best friend. In fact, I didn't yeah. even like me. So, you know, on this quest of chasing perfection, it was exactly what we were just talking about all kind of leading up to this point is that I wanted everything on the outside of what other people had. So I was constantly yeah. comparing my insides to others outsides. Yes. And I thought that if I had all the things, then I could be, I could do all the things and then I could be that person. And I had it so backwards. And when I, when I embarked on this journey of self-discovery, I really had to take a long, hard look at not only who I was then at that particular moment, but how I had gotten there. So for me to Mm. envision this future self, I had to just take pause. And in that pause is this presence, right? It's the letting go and it's the surrendering. And in that, in that moment, that's when we're not thinking about the future or the past, but yet the clear here and now of who you truly are. And so that is that that's the scary part, because I think for many of us being alone in this quiet, in the stillness, in this, this like serene moment of like, I should be doing something. I don't know what to do, but you're doing exactly what you need to do. You're discovering and you're connecting with your soul's calling like this spiritual being that resides inside this human existence, a shell. Yeah. we're, We're, we're not, we're not human beings living a spiritual life. We're spiritual beings living a human existence. And so when I flipped that, I was able to say, you know what, then I should probably know the spirit that resides in me. And that was just getting to be, you know, my own best friend. And so when I was able to sit in there, sit in those moments of, and, and reflect and take inventory and account of how I'd gotten to where I was, then I can now look back and say, okay, well, that was scary. That one's ugly. That one was painful. That one's daunting. This is a hot mess. And you can start unraveling again your life, but yet you get to sort and sort through and discard what no longer serves you in the here and now. And do you want to take that into the future that yet you haven't yet created, but yet you right. have an inkling of what you want and desire. And so, so getting through on that and just letting go of the past of what's holding you back brings you into the current future or f- into your present self. And that's the, who am I, what's holding me back and why, because now you get to start anew in this future, which is the, or the present, which is this gift to create the future you of who you want to become. Right. Uh, And again, like so much, yes. And, and all of that. And to those listening, as we, as you and I both know so much easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I want to ask you a couple of things to maybe help our listeners connect to the the, the part of the journey. The the first thing um, I'm curious of, you know, what was it and to whatever extent you want to be able to share in your story of what was it that was going on in your life where you had that aha moment, that wake up moment to say, wait a second, I, I need to slow down. I need to become my own best friend. I need to get curious about where I am and how I got here, if I really want to get to where I'm going. So like, you know, that, that beginning part of your journey. And then the second piece of that is we know that, you know, ancient tradition, contemplative practices teach us that these are the tools. Mm -hmm. And did, but did you have a guide? Did you have a teacher? Did you have a therapist? Did you have a mentor who was guiding you in saying, okay, Rachel, here's what you got to do next. Or was that just your own learning of what you uncovered? Because that's sometimes we conceptually or we logically or we rationally know, right? There is this like cognitive knowing, but then there's a very different step of embodying and doing it and then actually doing it authentically, not just doing it to check it off on the to-do list. Okay. I sat in meditation today. Check. I'm good now. Am I healed yet? Am I there yet? Have I arrived into alignment and flow and authenticity yet? So share a little bit more about what was that journey and how did you get to the guidance? So yes, it was long and it was this hard, arduous journey that I thought that I could do on my own because I've done everything else on my own, which everything I tried to do on my own turned to failure. So I got to this point and just said, okay, well, what, what I want to achieve in my life, I know that I single-handedly cannot do this alone. And I had um, gotten to this point. It was, it was about 2000. Um, 14 is when I actually asked for help the very first time. 
But to go back in time of how I even got to that breaking point was, you know, again, my, my book is chasing perfection, a journey to healing fitness and self-love. And so this idea of chase or of perfection was this constant chase because it's what I saw out there in like society and culture and media, magazine, social media, all, all the things of like, what is considered ideal, perfect, pretty, you know, equated this happiness, this love, acceptance, this worthiness that I was longing for inside. And I had this idea that, you know, if, if I was just, if, if everything would just be perfect, everything could just, you know, fall in place and I could stop chasing. I could finally find rest and peace and, and feel like just happy on the inside because I was struggling so much on the inside. Um, you know, and it came from a, a place of external and like physical outwardness. Um, you know, for me, it was just, I struggled probably the bulk of my life with, you know, body dysmorphia, um, eating disorders, yo-yo dieting, extreme exercise to self-image to self-esteem and, and lack of confidence all over the place. And I just never really found certainty in who I was, but then again, that was part of the journey was I, I kept losing myself every phase Mm -hmm. and stage that I kept trying to pursue. Um, and so in, you know, from an outward perspective, I, I, because of those struggles, I turned to fitness. And when I say fitness, it was the extremes. It was extreme dieting, extreme exercise as a way to control and manipulate my body because I physically didn't look how I like how I look because I felt different. I I thought Mm. I looked different and I grew up in a very small town. So there wasn't a whole lot of like short petite girls. There wasn't, you know, somebody with a thicker bottom. And like, I just, I didn't measure up to what was considered normal. Um, and then, so I felt this disconnect and it, and it prolonged, you know, throughout my younger years to young adulthood to adulthood, and even into, you know, my, my twenties and thirties. And I started to take note of how it was really affecting me. Like it consumed me. I became very hypercritical with how I would look, um, how others perceive me, what I thought of myself, um, you know, and just when you're in this constant struggle to stay afloat in this failure loop, it, you know, chasing perfection will continue to take on extremes. You'll continue to push more, do more, repeat, you know, and, and try and that perfection recipe to yeah. hopefully it turns out. Um, and so when all of that would just kind of hit ahead uh, at the time, it was uh, in, it was in 2010, actually, I, when this really hit ahead. Um, I unexpectedly had lost my brother and Mm. during this, this low, like it, it knocked me down. Right. And so in this low, in this grieving process, I just kept questioning, like, what am I doing here? What is my purpose? Like what, what is happening? Like, you know, I think sometimes we need those, those monumental changes, right. That just like knock you off. They wake us up, right? right. They help us see really clearly and get off of that autopilot that we've been living Absolutely. Or, or perhaps even help tune into those values that what's, what's most important to me. Right. And, and I said, you know, I don't want this to be my life where, you know, I, I don't have a purpose and what I'm called to do. And, you know, and it took a while to kind of get some traction on there. Um, and so, you know, come 2012, I, you know, again, struggling with what I looked like, you know, hopping every diet, all these things. I wanted that phase of, of my life to end. And so I was introduced to um, bodybuilding in uh, late 2011. And I entered my first bodybuilding competition in 2012. And this was, uh, it was for the bikini division, which was relatively newer at the time. It was a newer division of bodybuilding. And when I looked at these competitors, I said, well, that's the body I've been trying to chase. Like, so you're saying it's possible. I can look like that if I do X, Y, and Z. Wow. And so when, when that was presented to me, because all the other times I'm like, you know, I would follow the, the five steps to get the hot bod, you know, and like Cosmo or something. And, and, you know, <laughs> I did the five steps and I'm like, look in the mirror five days later, like, where's my hot bod? Like, you know what I mean? There, yeah. There's this big, big disconnect because I never understood this, that there's like a system, you know, that you have to have things in alignment and consistently adhere to them to create a lifestyle. Yeah. So but that lesson didn't come until later. So in 2012, I took the stage um, as a fitness competitor. And I remember doing all the things I went through 16 plus weeks of just extreme diets, extreme exercise. So it was no different than I was used to. And I was just like, whatever. I mean, I'll probably fail at this too, but whatever, at least I gave it a go. 
And that was the longest time I ever stuck to something for more than like the five day or even a week or something. Um, and I remember waking up uh, or actually it was like four days before my competition, we were doing our, our final trainings and our posing. And I felt this like pop inside of my body. Like the, there was just this pain that shot down. I was like, Oh, well, that's weird. Whatever. I'll just ignore it because I get competition. I'm totally just focused on the competition. And I, I remember taking this, uh, the stage four days later on that weekend. And after having, you know, glammed up this, this itty bitty bikini, you know, super dark spray tan, long curly hair, um, you know, with all the perfect curls, the makeup the, the, the I'm decked out. And I remember I looked in the mirror and was just like, who are you? I didn't even mm. recognize myself. I was, wow. I was, I was dying like so much to become somebody else that I was willing to sacrifice my identity and integrity to become what I thought was considered ideal, perfect and worthy. And mm -hmm. I, I, I wore the right costumes. I put on the right mask. I did all the right things. And somehow in this deep, dark pain that I'd been struggling with my entire life, I was leaving it up to a panel of judges who knew nothing yeah. about me or my story to dictate and determine my value of self-worth to tell me that I was enough, because if they had told me I was enough, then finally I would be able to rest. And I didn't place. And that's in a fact, false hope too, right? Like, right. We put the these perception. expectations, mm -hmm. right. We put these un un unrealistic expectations in the hands of strangers, but then again, somewhat how arbitrary expectations, right? Like it's right. the thought, it's the belief that isn't grounded and rooted in this self identity, but in this other identity. Right. And, you know, and I just, I, I was so broken at that time. I'm still grieving. I'm still healing. I'm still doing these things, but yeah, I didn't even realize what I needed. And I, I, I was thinking again, having that pause would maybe then I could figure things out at that time. And, you know, after, after the competition and I didn't, I didn't place, um, at all. I mean, of the place in there's top five and I didn't even get in the top five. And it was just like my hopes and dreams just got shattered. My expectations got, you know, just disappointment. Um, I felt even more of a loser and a failure because I'd invited friends and family out and just told them, oh, I'm going to do so well, you know, because I, I had, I put like all my eggs in this basket. This was going to be it. And mm -hmm. it was just, it was devastating because then I felt like I had really hit a rock bottom because I was so, I was going into this with such defeat and desperation that if didn't, this didn't pan out, I didn't have another backup. What was, what um, was next? Yeah. Yeah. Because I just wanted out of this for, for 20 plus years, I'd been struggling and battling with my body mm. and this is the body I have to live with. And then if the, it, and if it didn't go, I'm like, so I'm still stuck with this thing. What do I do with this thing that I absolutely hate? But it wasn't so much the body I hated. I hated myself to the core because I, I had so much baggage and hurt and trauma and loss and grief and, and pain and suffering, all this stuff packed so deep down inside of who I was. But yet, this is where we say you have to spend time with yourself because I didn't even know what was in there. Yeah. And it was, it was a lifetime of just nothing but just pain. If you had to sum it up, it's just pain. Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't just of the loss of my brother, but it was all the years of, of all that stuff that we collect throughout our life. And, you know, for some people we say, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm carting around a, a, you know, luggage of X, Y, and Z or a baggage. I'm like, nope, I had a U-Haul, <laughs> like the biggest one they got. It was jam packed full mm. of crap that I had to sort through and sift through to figure out what, how did I even get to this point that I thought yeah. that I could expect somebody else to, to you know, define me. So that pop that I heard actually turned out because of my, my, you know, just my pursuit in chasing perfection had disconnected me from my body, my mind and my spirit. Like they were all just, just somewhere scattered around. There was no alignment in there. Um, at the time I didn't realize it, but I had ruptured my disc. So my disc wow. was just like bulged out pressing on my nerve it sat there and caused such severe pain, but I just kept tuning it out. It's like when your alarm clock's blaring and blaring, you just make yeah. crank up you're the like, music wait, louder. What is that sound? <laughs> right. You just crank up the music louder and you're just like, well, you know, what, or your car is falling apart, right? You, you totally ignore it. You do something. It's like, you know, it's there, but yet you're not ready to address it. So you just mask it. And so this went on for about four months at this time. Um, 
And that's how I actually found out because the pain just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And eventually like my whole right side didn't even work. I was dragging my foot. I had no feeling, no sensation from my right side down. Um, and so that I found out a metaphor for the numbing of the pain, literally. Right. 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 And I just kept saying, well, just, I'll get to it. It'll heal on its own. Or, you know, I didn't even, it was just what an inconvenience is all I thought, like what a pain in the ass. I got to deal with this shit too. I don't even know what is happening. And so, you know, after realizing what it was, I, um, and this is now after four months, four months of me just ignoring it, the pain obviously got so worse and here we are. Um, and so this was 2012. So here we are, um, you know, almost 10 years after, and I still have some nerve damage, permanent nerve damage on my right side because of the four months that I neglected my body. Um, and that's what your body's internal alarm systems are supposed to tell you like, Hey, they're trying trying to protect us. Right. 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 And I was so disconnected because I was so focused on getting that outcome because I was so hurt and in, in, in so much pain physically, mentally, and emotionally at that time. So fast forward to 2014, um, you know, it was almost two, about a year and a half to two years post-competition. And at that time, um, they had told me that the doctors after the surgery and the physical therapist had told me that I would never lift again. Like I, like I, I, I was, and that really hurt me because it took a piece of my identity for fine. Finally, I actually fell in love with fitness and like the strength training aspect of it. But then, you know, part of it's taken away from you. So you're like, okay, then who am I without this? And what can I do to find passion? I finally found this passion after all these years and now it's taken away. Um, right. And so really, again, sitting in this pit, being told you can't do something, having an identity taken away from you, a passion taken away from you, physically being incapacitated and limited in what you can and can't do. And I just... I remember just crying for like ever what, what seemed like forever because I didn't know what was next. I didn't know if there was a hope. I didn't know if there was potential, like whatever that was until I started thinking, well, what if I start a little bit of weight lifting and what if I do a little bit of this? And so just these little glimmers of hope gave me some sort of like encouragement to keep going. And I realized then the biggest part that was the, you know, the hurdle in my life for this, this body image was my nutrition. I was such an extreme yo-yo dieter, extreme, like binging and, and purging and, you know, from, from all that stuff. And so I felt like, well, if that's the biggest thing that's, that's holding me back, what can I do to get my fitness life on track? Mm. And I hired my first fitness coach. And again, when going into it, I was just like, well, surely this would be a disappointment. Let me down. And I'll probably felt this too. And it was just that whole mantra. Old right stories, there. old stories kept coming. Right. Like they're right there, just beneath the surface. It's amazing how we think we've healed them. And it's almost like I, I envision that as, you know, kind of picking a scab and yeah. just kind of gushing because they're just right beneath the surface that's available to us. Right. And that's exactly what it was. It was like, okay, so I got to start there. And so hiring this, this coach really helped put me on the right path. But, um, you know, I, I, again, I didn't have a track history to report back on, like, I didn't have anything of success. All I knew was failure after failure after failure. So hiring somebody new was like, well, that's one thing I hadn't tried, you know, and so let's give it a try. And now I have monetary investment in, in, you know, skin in the game, a little bit different commitment level. Sure. Right. And so that was the exact encouragement and just, just first few steps that I needed because every, every time I would check in with her, um, it was still pretty, I was, I was, I was probably a terrible you know, student. I was like, Oh, I don't want to get a check-in from Rachel. Right. But I was that person who was just, I didn't see the good in it yet. But as I kept progressing along and having that accountability and that support allowed me to, to focus on the small steps, the small wins, the progress. Yes. And every time I started to see a little bit of change and it wasn't even from the physical, I started to be like, wow, that's new. That feels good. What's this weird thing I'm feeling inside. And so everything was like, it was blossoming again. Mm. Um, and so kind of in that bottom pit of where I had to begin again is when not only did I start having some success and traction in my physical journey, I started really questioning again, how I got there. And that's where that unraveling began. And that's when I started questioning, you know, who am I, what's holding me back and why. And so that, in that dark pit 
even though I was making a few steps forward, I was still stuck in all those other areas of my life. And that was when I had to like, just shine a flashlight in all the deepest, darkest crevices of, of who, you know, who Rachel was, because I didn't know who I was. I was a bit of everything, but as a whole, I was just this broken hot mess sitting at a bottom of a self-made made Mm. pit. And that's how I, for me to get out, I had to face my old self and everything that came with it so that I can embrace it and become who I'm created to be. And it, that's it, it the takes journey. So much, it takes so much courage. Oh, absolutely. To be able to shine that flashlight and so much vulnerability to then actually see what you saw mm-hmm. versus shame yourself away from it or externalize it or defend against it, which probably was, you know, as we're human, right? These are our defenses to hold ourselves together. So right. it's not just the courage and the vulnerability, but the, the, the grit to say, this is hard. And I can still look at this because I know this is the pathway through. I know this is the very thing mm-hmm. to get me to the spot that I'm yet able to reach. Right. And that's, that's the, the growing pains, you know, like they you know, say, get uncomfortable with being, um, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And it was so much of that because, you know, when you're in the midst of something, say like you're, you're walking through a tunnel, right. They say, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel and there's darkness on the other side. Well, if I've lived in the darkness, I mean, why would I want to return there? It was so painful for, for, you know, but even, even the, the walk down to the tunnel with the light was long and arduous and painful. Right. But if I retreated and went back to the darkness, well, that's to be expected. It's comfortable, but it sucks. It really, really sucked. But what is possible on that other side and in order to get to the other side, you just got to keep moving forward and, and, you know, being strong in that sense of like, I could take whatever's coming my way, because if I've survived all of this stuff, I can face what is coming at me from this other side, which is, you know, who I was and the uncertainty and the, in the present moments and all that stuff, because you don't know what's on that other side. But yet you well, do know they, what's it, on dark. Right, right, right. I, and I had such a, a similar process in, in, in one of my many um, awakening moments, but it was the realization that, you know, I used to have seen the future as scary and fearful. Mm-hmm. And yet I had the realization one day, but wait, that's where possibility resides. Because I thought because I'm in the present and I'm in the known, mm-hmm. but that was easier. But the known was what was making me unhappy. So by default, it was the unknown in which I could find the alignment, the inner peace, the, you know, my authenticity unfolding, it had to exist in the unknown. So it was like this complete mindfuck of, wait a second, there was this perception I was thinking one way. And actually that way of thinking was serving to really only keep me stuck. Right. And it's, it's that unknown, but if you already know what's comfortable and you know, predictable and, does and certain not mean good though. It just no, means you know how to do it. Right. And I was sick of doing what I was doing because it, it was just, yeah, comfortable, but it sucked. There was no fulfillment. There was no joy. There was no happiness. There was no love. There was, there was nothing in this place. So why would I want to stay in a place that isn't conducive to the life that I want or even yeah. who I want to become? But yeah, I didn't know any of those questions. So like, you know, who did you want to become? What was the life you want? I had no idea. All I knew for a hard yes was get me out of this as quickly as possible. And so I just kept plowing my way through that messy middle to get to the other side, because that other side has got to be better than what what I'm enduring at this moment in my life. Um, And so that's the journey. And so it's not like I just came through this tunnel and beaming with glowing light and be like, awesome. Everything's amazing. No, every day is a struggle. And every day still to this day, it's like, you know, I get that question like, well, what's your biggest challenge? What's your biggest struggle now that you've like overcome this stuff? And and every day it's, it's still a battle of, of, you know, combating self-doubt of, you know, winning these daily battles. And, you know, sometimes the battles I lose, but yeah, I'm trying to win this war against myself. Right. So it's just this evilness or it's like the negative and positive. But if I keep giving into that negativity, I know I'm going to go right back to where I was. Well, and I think what you've gained is the awareness to know, I just got to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Right. That I can, even if it's hard, nothing is wrong with me for feeling what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. This is part of the journey that I thought I was, some, you know, and I think that's where so many women get really stuck is the 
perceived sense of shame around what's wrong with me for feeling this way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shame, and shame again, we go into thing. that, that comparison mind and uh, Oprah and Dr. Bruce Perry have a new book recently that came out and it's titled what happened to you, mm-hmm. you know, instead of what's wrong with you, it's what happened to you. And when we can have the compassion and the curiosity to say, okay, these emotions, these thoughts are coming from somewhere, even if it's transgenerational trauma, that is just in your DNA that maybe consciously you aren't even aware of, but there's something that has led you to living in certain defenses or in certain perceived sense of safeties. Right. And when we, when we have that moment to say, you know, one of my, my wake up moments was that a nine in quote that says, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was greater than the risk it took to blossom. I was like, Oh my God, fuck. Yeah. Like (laughs) that, because it was harder to stay stuck. And I thought it was going to be harder to grow, but staying stuck ended up being 10 times harder, but it takes courage and patience. And again, all the things, the pause, the breath, the vulnerability, the ability to say, this is hard. And can I sit in what's hard? Because there, you know, my curiosity will be this, this guiding light to take me out. Right. And, and I love that you brought up that quote, because one that really resonated with me at the, at the start of my journey was change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. And that's by Tony Robbins. And I remember when I heard that, I was just like, well, pain is like my best friend and it, it sucks. Like, you know, we become tight, but yet when I know how to do pain. So unbearable. <laughs> right. But it was like when the pain became so unbearable, when it was like, it crippled me. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, talking about like the mental, the emotional and the physical just crippling of pain that's when I said, I cannot do this anymore. Like I physically can't even do this. I always just kept, you know, I was disconnected mentally and emotionally, but when your physical body can't keep up with it, I was just like, something has to change because I would just keep, you know, plowing through, not even paying attention to what my mind's mind and emotions were telling me. But yeah, it was just uh, getting to that point and just recognizing like, I don't want to be where I'm at right now, but anything has to be better than what I'm at right now. So how can we continue moving forward into this journey? But yet every step that you take, you're building up more of that uh, confidence and courage. And so again, consistency compounded over time yields results. So what I was doing was consistently showing up for myself despite the win or the losses. But yeah, I kept getting up and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And it makes me want to sing L cool J, but (laughs) (laughs) I was doing it well. And, um, you know, you keep moving forward, but yet you build that, that confidence that no matter what happens, you're, you're choosing you over what was and having, yes. you know, the, the faith over fear, courage over, over, uh, you know, self-doubt and, and facing that with just confidence and knowing that you've gotten this far in your life and you've been able to overcome and survive so you can handle and you're equipped for what's next ahead of you. So just be yes. confident in what you are able to do and connect into your, your faith and your spiritual being, because that will guide you through to those next steps. So, Ugh, in, it, you know, it, in, in summation, it's like yeah. having that is the progress of coming through. And then, you know, my journey was that, that messy middle, but yet in the book, it's like how I came through on the other side. And that's where all the, the silver linings, the lessons, the blessings, the, the, the wins, the successes, that's where progress is on that other side. But yet we wouldn't know that if we, if we didn't take that first step. Um, and so looking back at it, it's like, that's the beauty. That's the lesson. That's the gift that I want to give back to others. Because again, I know for so long what I lived in and I don't ever want anybody to sit there. Even if they had to sit in the moment in the pit with me for a moment, a moment's too long. So let's get you out of this pit as quickly as possible. So that's what the, you know, the, the point of my storytelling in my book, but also the lessons and the strategies and the practicals that are inside there as well. And then, you know, kind of coming full circle and onto that other side is now I'm able to not only step into my passions, but I get to live with passion every day because that stuff pissed me off. And then my passion Mm -hmm. comes from helping other women do the same thing, empowering them with the gifts that I, I, as a creator, I get to create and be of service to help people. And so yeah. now of this starts, you know, putting you on the path of purpose. And when you recognize that, again, you're, you're created with on and for purpose, 
and knowing who you are and whose you are, that negates everything else of what you believed in the past, because that's, that's what you believe, but yet you yeah. know that there's a bigger power, you know, that there's a bigger outcome there. We're here for, a, you know, a reason. And I truly believe that every, every person is destined for greatness, but it's up to us to believe it and extract it into our lives and, and we're called and equipped to handle this as we continue throughout this journey. And our journey isn't alone. It's about, you know, having somebody ahead of us pulling our hand and, uh, you know, our other hand guiding or pulling somebody along with us as we're guiding guided throughout this journey together collectively. Absolutely. Oh. Rachel, I thank you so much <laughs> for so vulnerably sharing your story and sharing your gifts and how you are now able to live in your alignment and in your purpose to help others because this being human shit is hard. <laughs> And, you know, I've said it many times before on the podcast, and I say this all the time with my clients, but like, could you imagine how much easier we would all have if when we were brand new, newborn, perfect little babies, someone held us and looked at us square in the eye and said, just so you know, it's going to really suck a lot of the time. And just know it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Just life is hard and you're going to be okay. And you're going to get through it. And ideally you grow and you learn from it. And when you're in that hard place, don't think it's because you've done something wrong, but you're not good enough. Like, I just think the world would be a little bit easier to move through if our expectations from day one was this is hard because mm -hmm. we all come up against that hard. And then we think what's wrong with me for it being hard. Mm -hmm. And yet when we have the vulnerability to share our stories we realize, wait a second, I mean, I'm not the only one. And then there's like actual wisdom in this pain that I can learn and grow from. Should I choose to look at it in that way? Like, gosh, it's just so beautiful at that point, right? Like, so yeah, so thank you so much. And how can people find you if they want to become part of the collective or get your book? What's the best resources to, to get access to, to you? Yes. Well, thank Thanks. I mean, this has just been incredible. You know, I, I love just sharing the, the journey and the story and really the, the overall, like, you know, you're, you're not in this alone. And no. I, th I truly believe that, you know, if I had more people in my corner at the time, when I first started, maybe it wouldn't have taken as long, but yet, you know, knowing that, Hey, it's okay. When you're knocked down, you just get right back up, you do these things. And like, it's easier said than done, but when you feel like you've been going at life alone, um, it does get really discouraging. And so that's what, you know, part of my mission is just, yeah, sharing that journey, knowing that there's hope there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel and to know that we have other people in your life. And if, if your current support system isn't, you know, conducive in aiding you to get to that next level, that's why I invite you to come and join the confident woman community, as well as the confident woman collective, which is really the, the private community of, uh, women, just inspiring women, encouraging women and empowering women from the inside out. Um, but for, to connect on that is, uh, the confident woman collective.com as well as you can find me on all social platforms. I am Rachel Brooks and my website, I am Rachel Brooks.com. And my book is available everywhere and anywhere books are sold worldwide. So, well, yes. Congrats to all of your inner work and, you know, all of the outward success is really meaningful because you've done the inner journey. You know, I, Believe me, I talk to a lot of people and there's plenty of people who are producing just as much but don't have the integrity underneath the work. And I'm not shaming them. I just am really honoring your journey, your authenticity and your growth because it's, it is inspiring. And I think that's what brings people into the community is when they see a piece of themselves in you to say, wait, I, she, she was stuck too because she looks like she has it all together. And when we can reveal our wounds and reveal our journeys and our pain points, there's so much greater opportunity to grow and heal as a humanity, which is desperately what I think we're all needing right now. I agree. So Rachel, thank you again so much. I, like I said, there was like so many different avenues I could continue to talk with you about. So we'll just have to continue our conversation offline because there's, there's a lot of alignment in our work and in our journeys. And it's really so fulfilling for me to connect with women like you who are doing the work that you're doing and to be able to support you in that. So again, thanks for your time today. All right, everyone take care and be well. To continue your journey forward, find Jory Rose on Facebook and Instagram to become part of her growing community. 
You can also gain access to her meditations, books, online classes, or to sign up for an upcoming retreat, visit her at joryrose.com. That's J-O-R-E-E-R-O-S-E dot com.